What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back, back with another SketchUp Essentials tutorial for you. So this week we're going to talk a little bit about say, or using scenes to save visibilities in SketchUp. And I already kind of created a video on this, but this is going to be more of a three-part series. Uh, we're going to start off with saving scenes and different visibilities, but then we're going to move into creating animations in SketchUp. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So basically the way that SketchUp uses visibilities is it allows you to save your different uh, camera and view attributes in scenes. And so uh, what that allows you to do is that allows you to create a view and then continually go back to it. And uh, it kind of builds on this to allow you to create animations and other kind of stuff. But um, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about scenes first of all. So a scene is basically a saved version of your current viewpoint information. So for example, if you save a scene, it saves th things like your camera location, uh, hidden geometry, um, active sections and planes, uh, all that different stuff. So you can save hidden objects, you can save layers, you can save section cuts. And that gets really important when you create animations a little bit later. But for right now, let's just talk a little bit about some of the stuff that it can do. So first of all, um, in order to create a scene in SketchUp, it's really easy. Uh, you can just go up to View, click Animation, and click Add Scene. And basically, when you add a scene, that's going to come in here and that's going to save save your current view as a scene. So like for example, if I come in here and I create a scene right here um, with this viewpoint and then I kind of fly around the model a little bit, um, and then I click on this scene, SketchUp will take me back to whatever the view was when I first saved this view. And you can do this as many times as you want. So if you want a scene that shows this this way and then another scene that kind of shows it more this way, you can just come in here and you can add another scene. And then you can jump back and forth between them and SketchUp will kind of transition between the two scenes. Um, and it can use that to create animations, but we'll talk about that in the next video. For right now, let's talk about a few of the other things that you can do with your scenes. So you, you know, if you just want to save camera views and stuff like that, it's really easy to do. Um, once you have a scene in here and you want to add a new one, so you can fly around in here to whatever you want your new scene to be, whatever you want your new angle to be, uh, whatever. And um, if all you want to do is just save a view, you can just come in here and right click and click add. And that'll just add a new scene that'll save whatever you have um, in here. So if that's all you're looking to do, that's really fast and easy. And then um, you can come in here and you can also update different scenes. Like remember this this last scene that I created has us kind of looking down at the top of this model. Um, but if I move my camera over here and I decide that's what I want scene four to be, you can come up here and right click on that and click update. And it'll just update your camera view to the new camera view. So now if I go back up here and then I click on scene four, it'll take you back to whatever you updated this to be. So it's a really easy way to save some camera views, but it also allows you to do a whole lot of other things as well. Um, so, and a lot of this stuff can be managed over here using the scene section of your tray. So this section allows you to kind of come in here and adjust a whole bunch of different stuff about your scenes. You can adjust which properties it saves. Um, you can adjust if things are included in animations. You can get thumbnails. You can rename your thing scenes so you can do a lot of stuff over here in the scenes section of your tray and if you don't see that for whatever reason um, go up to window default tray and make sure scenes is checked so and if your tray is not on make sure that show tray just click on show tray um, under your default tray in order to have that over here so anyway your scene section will allow you like for example if I wanted my scene four to be a top-down view I could come in here and I could adjust this and you can see when I updated my scene it also updated this little thumbnail in here so you can kind of look at these thumbnails and see what your scenes are but I can come in here and I can call this like top down view for example and that'll come in here and that'll adjust this um, in the actual list of scenes at the top of your screen as well so You can come in here and you can name these so that you can jump between different scenes really quickly. Um, so and a lot of architects end up doing this when they go back to a bunch of scenes, like when they're creating scenes to export images and stuff like that. Um, they'll have a whole bunch of different views that they work from in here. So you can definitely save all those visibility settings and stuff like that. Um, now let's talk a little bit about 
um, saving things other than camera angles. Like for example, I have this model right here that I downloaded out of the 3D warehouse, but I also have this other model, which is a motorcycle, which I also downloaded from the 3D warehouse. And you can see that that was hidden this whole time. Um, but if I want to create a view where it's not hidden, like this, I can come in here and I can click add, and that'll create a scene where the motorcycle actually shows up. And uh, so what that does is it saves all the current visibility information in this scene four right now. So it's basically saying in scene four, this motorcycle is shown. You can see this motorcycle. But if I go back to like this other scene over here, you can see the motorcycle doesn't show up anymore. Um, and that's because it was hidden when I created the scene. And so what SketchUp's doing is it's saving the visibility information that's currently active in the model. So like if I was to come in here and I was to hide this model as well, and then update my scene, then if I go to the top down view, you can see that model shows up, but the lower view from down here no longer shows that default model. And so basically SketchUp said, okay, these these objects need to be hidden whenever we go to this scene. And that allows you to do a lot of different things, especially when we start getting into animations. But so you can hide objects and then save a scene without, the, without um, having them in there. You can also come in here and you can adjust your styles in your different scenes. Like for example, uh, this has a style that, um, you see how it takes a second to load because it's loading all the different line weights and stuff like that. So if I go to the the shaded with texture style, you can see it's a lot faster because it's not loading all those extra line weights in here. Um, and you can tell it's a faster uh, style because it's got the little fast modeling style badge in the lower right hand corner. But like, let's say for example that I didn't want to load all those different uh, line weights and stuff like that. I just wanted something, you know, it was real fast that I could, uh, that uh, didn't take as long to load, I could create a new view by coming in here and clicking add. And not only will this save the camera angle, but it'll also save the actual style information. So if I click on this scene four, for example, that's gonna have the motorcycle and everything in it. But you can see the background changed and the line weights changed and stuff like that, because that has the architectural design style selected. But if I go to the scene five, it's gonna switch to this shaded style. And so in that way, you can also save your style information in your current scenes as well as as well as well things like um, camera angles and stuff like that. So and this is fairly unlimited. Um, you can save most of the things. Like if I was to come in here and I was to turn the axes off in, uh, in this scene, you can see that's asking me because I changed the style. Um, if I want to update the selected style or not, but if I click save as a new style, um, then this basically has a style selected that doesn't have the axes in it. And so now if I switch back and forth between the two, then I now have a scene where the axes are no longer in here. And um, so you can save pretty much anything having to do with visibility information. So if I came here and I added a section plane just like this, so I cut across my model, like this. So if I've got this section in here and I want to do a cut between uh, these columns, for example, so that I'm actually cutting into them as a part of my view, then I can come in here, I can hide the plane, but I can update the scene. So not only does it save the style, but it also saves the section cut. So if you're coming in here and sectioning a building or something like that, you can save section cuts as well. Um, and we'll talk a lot more about this uh, when I talk about using section planes to create animations. But you can see that you can come in here and you can save that as well. So it's really versatile and it really allows you to uh, do a lot of different stuff. So finally, I'm just going to walk you through like a quick practical example of the way this could work. Like, let's say, for example, that I want this scene where I've got the motorcycle in the back or the motorcycle in the foreground, my restaurant kind of in the background, stuff like that. And uh, I, and let's say that I had to come in here and I had to model this motorcycle, for example. Um, let's say that I didn't download it from the 3D warehouse. Um, probably what I'm going to want is I'm probably going to want at least three scenes that I'm working from. So the first scene that I would create is I would create a scene where I hide the restaurant and the person so that I could just 
work on the motorcycle. So I would create a scene where I could just come in here and work on the motorcycle. And I might, depending on what I was doing, create a scene that has kind of a faster line weight in it as well uh, to let it load a little faster. But then you could come in here, you could adjust the different faces and stuff like that. And you could just work on the motorcycle without all that other junk in the background kind of slowing your model down. So that could be one scene. You could call this motorcycle working scene. So that would be one scene that you'd want. Uh, the second scene that you'd probably want is you'd probably want a scene where you could just work on your restaurant here. So like you've got all these different chairs and stuff like that. And if you were modeling something like this, for example, you'd probably want to come in here and work on this. You'd probably want to come in here and work on this without having the motorcycle in the background slowing everything down and stuff like that. So I'd probably create another scene in here, um, probably call it restaurant working scene and if you're really getting in depth you'd probably hide things in here like the trees and stuff like that because it kind of get in your way like if you're working with the tables and the chairs you wouldn't need the trees in here so you could hide those in here as well in order for you to be able to just come in here to be able to just come in here and work on uh, all of this stuff so that'd probably be your second scene and then you'd probably want a scene as well where you could actually create your final image. So your final image is going to have everything shown. It's going to have your camera angle the way that you want it. You might you might even end up coming in here and uh, like changing your uh, focal view of your lens so that you could see more. You could save all of that stuff. So probably what I'd do is I'd create this final scene and I'd name it complete scene just like this and so not only would I want to uh, not only would I want to have everything shown in here the other thing I would probably want to do is I'd probably want to come in here to whatever style I'm working with and I'd probably want to add a background image so let's say for example I pick this simple style in here um, probably what I would do is I'd come in here and I'd show the ground, but then I'd come in here and I'd put a watermark over the background. So I'd probably pick a sky background, kind of like this one, um, just in the background. I wouldn't blend it. I'd stretch it across the screen just like this, but then you can kind of adjust the way that all this works. So you actually have your sky image in the background as well. So you've got your ground, you've got your sky, you've got all your different models shown. And if you really wanted to, you could probably come in here and you could hide. You might or might not want to hide your edges, but you could adjust some things so that this looked even smoother as well. But once you've kind of got everything the way you want it, um, probably come in here and make the ground a little darker. But once you've got everything in here kind of the way you want it and you've created the scene that you want, you could just come in here and you could update this final scene. And it's going to ask if I want to save my style changes. And I'm going to go ahead and say yes because this is like a custom style with the background in here. But now what I've got is I've got a scene where I can kind of fly around here and I can get my camera where I want it to be. Then I can update this final scene. But if I want to go back and just work on my motorcycle, I can just click on the motorcycle working scene, flip back to that, do some work in here, and then go back to my complete scene and see if I like the way that it looks. Um, in the same way, if I wanted to do some work on my restaurant in here, I could go back to my restaurant working scene and then flip back to my complete scene. So uh, it really gives you a lot of options for adjusting your visibilities and stuff like that. And uh, the next thing we're going to talk about in the next video is actually transitioning between the scenes to create some animations. But for now, that's where I'm going to end today's video. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you really like what I'm doing, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Um, every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. That helps me just keep bringing you great SketchUp content. But in any case, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.